to look back at the last Forge FC contest. Simply stunning stuff. And finally, their goal. Here is Match and Reveal. My word, what a rocket. With Anthony Urcioli on the Forge Audio Network. Hello, Forge fans. It's the Forge Audio Network. I'm Anthony Urcioli. Coming to you live from Tim Time Gordon's to look Fields back at the last Forge FC in contest. Hamilton. Simply stunning stuff. As we do the intro once again. Listen, here's what I'll tell you. And um, I, I can't, uh, I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you. Not a pretty one for Forge FC. And to be honest, that might be putting it kindly. An unbelievable tale of two halves. I, I've said that a lot this season. Um, and it's just not good enough. And it was no exception today. In fact, this may have summed up the season for Forge FC as far as I'm concerned. You had a first half that was um, thoroughly dominating for Forge FC. Resulted in, I think, just one shot on target in that first half. Uh, No goals, despite some golden opportunities. Go into the second half. Pacific finds their game. And they eke out a 1-0 win. Forge FC falling at home. And it leaves them in a bit of early trouble if we're looking at the overall table. Uh, in fact, let, let's 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 dig right into the overall table right now. Uh, Forge now began the week in first place. They have dropped to third. Pacific on top now, eighteen points in nine matches. Uh, Forge is at sixteen, so they're two points back, and Pacific have a match in hand. And um, York now surpassing Forge FC in the table. They are tied on points. But York, with the edge, they have the extra win. So that's uh, two losses now for Forge. Home record, uh, not where it needs to be by any stretch of the imagination. Now just one win at home for Forge FC this season after six matches. And, I mean, I'll take you through it step by step, but I I really thought this match kind of summed things up for Forge. Not capitalizing on early opportunities. Uh, just not enough. The, the clinical finish wasn't there. Not enough quality in the final third, and they they almost just kind of it. Just when you you miss those opportunities against a really good club, it's tough to get them again. Um, and Forge really didn't. And at the second half, it, it was kind of the the Pacific show. So let's start right off the top here. Forge coming out to their traditional four three three look. Um, Taryn Campbell, Pasias, Borges up top. With Becker, Sissoko, Hojab, Rapport in the middle, and uh, Dominic Samuel, Mandrakar James, Alex, Sash, and Yodi Anson, Rama making up the back line, Tristan Henry in goal. This was an attack that, again, not dislim- dissimilar to what we've seen this season. Attacking from the right side, overloading the right side. You had Taron Campbell, who technically lined up as as on that left side of the wing, but really moved in as kind of an extra attacker. Then you had Becker filling in behind him. And yeah, it was a similar, I mean, we've seen Forge attack this way before this season, not a ton of surprises, but I got to tell you early on, I mean, the first thing I have written in my, my notes, my copious notes here, um, all Forge, that's what I wrote, all Forge, motivated, dictated play, which was a, one of the keys, dictate, dictate was one of the keys this week and Forge did, they played their game. They, it was, I mean, the possession was there. We get it. Like, I think at um, at around the 20-minute mark, I had it written down that Forge had 70% possession, 90% pass accuracy, but the shots on target were 1-1. And here in lies the problems for Forge FC in a nutshell. Um, just minutes in, minutes in. Paseas, glorious opportunity. About 20 yards out um, in the area. And just, you know, the ball sails over the goal with any, he, he had time. And um, again, not to, I don't want to pick on one individual player, but he just, he had the best opportunity early um, and he couldn't capitalize. In fact, Forge didn't even come out with a, a shot on target after that opportunity. And he knew, you know, he knew he needed to be better. But, 18 minutes, this was like, you know, this was early on. And then really the most noteworthy moment after that 18-minute mark 
You had a huge save from Tristan Henry after a sloppy turnover. And really that those were those were your two major opportunities in that first 20 minutes. But Forge dictated play. They absolutely did. No question about that. In that first half, Forge needed more. Um, ball possession in that first half ended at 63% in favor of Forge, but just one shot on target. Um, in fact, Pacific had two shots on target despite giving up the majority of the possession. Not, not a good first half. Now, this was billed as a CPL final preview. And when you looked at the table, that's what it looked like. And even when you looked at the talent on paper, that's kind of what you're, you're looking at here in terms of the best two clubs, the two deepest clubs. Um, and it was, you know, Pacific, very high scoring team, also susceptible to giving up some goals. Um, but in this one, they play almost the pitch perfect away match. One nothing. They hang on in that first half, right? They bend, but they don't break. And then in the second half, they just, they, they come alive. Things did get rough in that first half. Uh, 29th minute, Donna J. Reed with a yellow card. You thought maybe the referee was sending a message because things were getting a little chippy in that first half. A couple minutes later, Mandricar James got a yellow himself. Uh, and then the 36th minute, Henry called upon again to make a huge save where he had to dive. And uh, Henry was called upon a few times in this match. In the 40, this kind of again summed it up. Uh, 42nd minute, Forge had numbers off the counter. It was a three on two. Kyle Becker had the ball, handed it off to Campbell, and they just they lost possession. They, 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 they weren't unable to get a shot on target during that opportunity. So the second half rolled on. 65th minute, Forge started making some changes to their lineup. Noah Jensen, uh, Jordan Hamilton, and Ashton Morgan in. Uh, Borges, Taryn Campbell, and Hojab Rapor out. And then a, a bit of a different look for Forge FC in that second half as well after those substitutions because Jordan Hamilton playing as that striker. Pasias moving out to the right in that wing position. Um, and then Noah Jensen on the left wing, which is not somewhere we've seen. Now, we know that when Forge has possession, there's a lot of fluidity in that attack. So when you say left wing, right wing, it, it's it's it kind of starts that way and then things start moving around. Um, but I don't remember seeing Noah Jensen playing in that left wing position before did in that second half. And um, then 79th minute forge looking to get something going because they, they did not like their game in the second half. And it was David Chouanier coming in for Pasillas, but, but one miscue, one major mistake at the back end. And it results in a goal Daniels in the 85th minute for Pacific. And that would be, your game winner. The small pocket of Pacific supporters here at Tim Hortons Field. Sure glad they made the trip. Um, just to go through these second half numbers here, ball possession. Um, I mentioned the first half, Forge had 63%. Second half, Forge had 49%. So a tail of two halves maybe doesn't even do this justice. Shot attempts, second half alone, Pacific at 14 Forge had five shots on target, two for Pacific, zero. Not even a shot on target for Forge FC in that second half. And Tristan Henry was called upon quite a bit in this one to make some really big saves. Dangerous attacks in that second half, uh, 34 to 28 in favor of Pacific. Yeah, I, I mean, we can, we can run through these stats, but they pretty much tell uh, the same story as Forge. They came out. Um, they finally had that week, right? Because they had, I think we were at, what, five five matches in, in 16 days we were at. And you wondered if maybe there's some fatigue. Forge really needed this week off that they had to get back to training, work on some things, iron some things out. There's not a whole lot. You know, when you're, you're in a 16-day, five-match, um, you know, section of your schedule – you can't do a whole lot in terms of making changes and making, and it's even sometimes tough to, to get a clear reading on your squad during that span as well. And there's travel and your training is cut short. 
So it, it, it's an awkward kind of stretch of your schedule. And, and those were difficult games they were playing. I mean, it, not only that, but across two different competitions, right? they had a Canadian championship match against Montreal, then they had league matches in between, they had tough ones against uh, York um, at Cavalry. And this one against Pacific, who going into this match, Pacific was the most in form club in the CPL. And you know, Pacific was going to bring it. But early on, and that's where, when if you're forged and you're looking back, I mean, that is where this game. You know, they lost the game because of a late goal from Pacific. But the game, you almost wonder if it was lost even earlier than that when Forge carried the play, dictated the play, played Forge soccer and, and had some opportunities, but just couldn't get much out of it. Not even really a shot on target. And I mean, if we go back to those three keys, a big one too was that Pacific was coming in with two unproven goalkeepers. Now it's basket that that played today, but and he ends up with a clean sheet. Um, he didn't really have to do a whole lot. I mean, he he faced one shot on target, uh, and I remember the shot. It, it wasn't an overly difficult one, but that's okay because you just you wanted to test these keepers, especially early. That was a big part of the three keys coming in. Not only you want to test these inexperienced, well, let's say unproven keepers, test them, but especially early, test them early. Just Get the shot. Get it on target. Don't overthink. So you're getting in your head a little bit. Just hit the target. Hit the target. Uh, and they just they failed to do so. And at the end of the day, Pacific leaves with a clean sheet without really being overly tested. Um, by the way, expected goals in the second half, 1.62 for Pacific, 0 0.20 for Forge FC. That's in the second half of a what was mostly a scoreless game. So I told I said I told you I wasn't going to sugarcoat it going into the broadcast and I it's hard to. I mean how how can how can you sugarcoat it? I think it's it's a disappointment for Forge FC and it's a match that is going to stick with them. And maybe that's not a bad thing. You know sometimes things have to go you, you kind of have to get that bad feeling before you can really turn things around and maybe this was that moment because they hit the road now tough matchup against valor uh on friday it's an 8 p.m start time eastern about a very difficult place to play and, and forge has been good on the road this year i mean they've been they've been a better road team than they have been a home team this season so maybe maybe in the grand scheme of things if we're going to go glass half full on this one they're in third place. There's still only two points behind Pacific for that top spot, right? The two clubs have split matches this season, both getting wins on the road. So you haven't really given much up to Pacific. Um, yes, York is coming on, but York doesn't have the depth that these other two clubs have. And so you wonder across the duration of a season if York is going to be able to sustain uh, some of the success they've been having. And at the end of the day, maybe this is the wake-up call. Because you can see at when Pacific scored the go-ahead goal, you saw it in the players' faces. It just, it's just It's frustration. It's you know we're better than this. Sometimes these things need to happen before things get good again. Now, fortunately, if you talk to Forge, they're going to tell you, um, they haven't been at their best to start the year, despite being in first place. That's the good news. A team that has not been completely happy with their output, still at the top of the table, that puts a lot of pressure on themselves. You know the demand from the coaches, from the players on themselves, from, from the organization as a whole, from the fans. Um, you know, as fans, you're you're used to this team running the table and winning championships. So, I think when you get all of this disappointment kind of wrapped up and, and now you hit the road and a tough match against Valor, but you've been great on the road. You have this really bad taste in your mouth that it's going to stick with you for a couple years, a couple days. And you're going to be telling yourself going into that match, we don't want to feel that way anymore. There's your glass half full moment. And this is a club that has learned, by the way, that typically bounces back 
after disappointing results and disappointing performances. And this is one where I, I think we do have to call it an overall disappointing performance because you, it, it, the, the, the two different halves thing, it's, it's, it's not sustainable. And it's happened way too often this season. So perhaps this is the wake up call game. And the good news is you're, you're, there's two points out of first place with plenty, plenty of matches to be played still. I mean, at the end of the day, we're what? We're, I mean, we, we still, we're, we're, we just finished kind of that third mark of the season. So. If you're for a FC, you're looking up, you're like, okay. I mean, we still have like 18 matches. I mean, I'm no mathematician, but, you know, there's like 26 points out there or something still. So th- there's a lot left to be played. I just think this club is going to look back at this recent stretch, their home performance, and they're only going to get better from here because there's way too much. You look up and down that roster. There's too much pride. There's too much pedigree. There's too much talent up and down that lineup uh, for this to go on much longer. You know they're going to break out of it. You just know, right? You know the floodgates are going to open at some point, and we are going to see that high-scoring, high-flying Forge FC squad that we've become accustomed to. Because right now, 10 matches, this club has 11 goals through 10 matches. Uh, I mean, Pacific has 19, uh, you know. Now, On the positive side of that, when you look at this club's defensive output, right, still among the top of the league, this team can def, and they played a a club in Pacific that has been almost scoring at will up to this point. Um, So, some good, listen, there's some good news around this roster and around this team, Um, but the results not there and, and the performance just wasn't up to snuff. So, up next, as mentioned, Valor, that comes up on Friday. It's a road match. I think it's exactly what this club needs. And then you're on a short week. You should go from Valor to another away match. Forge will make their first ever trip to play Vancouver FC. That's a 10 o'clock start time on a Tuesday. Uh, and then they're back home on the 25th. It's a Sunday to host Atletico Ottawa. So an opportunity, two matches on the road. I think that's where Forge needs to be right now. I just think that's where they've been at their best this season for whatever reason. And it seems to bring the best out of them. And then a couple of road matches, right? You can stockpile six points, hopefully. And then you're back at home to play Atletico Ottawa. And the schedule is kind of condensed. So, Again, they're not going to have a ton of time for training uh, and they're traveling. So, you know, they're, they're going to have to figure it out on the field, uh, in the film room and in that limited training time that they do have. But your final, once again, Forge FC losing at home to Pacific FC. One, nothing dropping to third place at the table. Pacific now, um, they're at the top. Um, And they've played less matches than both York and Forge. So there's no way around the fact that Pacific has been the team this year that has looked the strongest. But plenty of football to be played. And yeah, Forge FC with an opportunity now on the road. Okay, that's going to do it for the live match in review. I'm Anthony Urcioli. This is the Forge Audio Network. You are going to want to stay tuned. Subscribe however you get your Forge content. Maybe it's on YouTube. Uh, Maybe it's wherever you get your podcasts. Maybe you just follow on social media, and that's where you get most of your Forage content. Wherever you are, we are here, and we just we're pushing we're pushing it out between uh, Mackenzie and myself. There's a lot to go around, and they keep coming. So stay tuned. However you get your Forage, however wherever you may be listening and or watching, um, we'll have a match day preview coming up, and we'll tee up that match against Valor as Forage looks to right the ship okay that's it for me we'll talk to you soon this has been match in review with anthony urtioli on the forge audio network for the latest on all things forge fc subscribe on spotify or wherever you get your podcasts